So now we're getting into where we have the triple option component to it. All right, I'll let this one play through. So you can see the, the bind it puts. Earlier, you know, the previous presentation, we showed the same thing and we we're running uh, zone with the triple option. But here we get all the way, you know, almost to touch on if he keeps his feet here. And why this thing spurts out, all right, so we've got a 4-2 box. We got our, I'll start with our two pullers for depth, all right? They're getting depth off the ball. They're getting depth off the ball and away from the offensive line that are actually engaged in blocks. That also drives me crazy, too, is like the dudes on the left side of the line, they have immediate threats that are going to be blocking guys. So if we ever have a puller that runs into them, I'm just losing my mind. I'm like, you could go, you can go back five yards. You can get, you know, you can get as far back away from those dudes as possible. There's no reason to, um, there's no reason to be that close to anybody up front. There's no reason to be crowding on your bucket step and be flat down. Plus, I think it's easier to get away and it creates better angles for you. Sorry, right, jumping around here. All right. So we have the pull read. So see, or excuse me, we have the give read. So see how the defensive end doesn't, really, he crashes down a little bit, which maybe in zone, that would be a pull, but because our track is wider, it's a give all the way. And they've got number five ready there for the option switch with our quarterback coming off this thing. Well, if you look back into the boundary, all right, we've got a log. It's, it turns in, it's from a trap to a log. We always say trap to a log, trap to a log. So our guard is trapping the defensive end. And because he doesn't you know, feel like he got inside of him, he starts running his feet vertical. And now he's square through there. Our tackle does an amazing job here. He gets around this thing and legitimately blocks both of these guys, which I say never do. <laughs> Please do, just block one guy. I'll be happy if you block one guy. Well, now I'm really happy because he ended up bear hugging two of them. Our running back reads it very, very nicely. Um, and then also our 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 down blocks are awesome here. Look at the left tackle. First step, boom, coming out. Foot, low knee, foot in the ground, drives that hip and glides off to number five who can't move because he's trying to defend, you know, zone and GT at the same time. Our center pins, it's an easy one. And this thing busts for a big run because, uh, you know, again, adding value. This play adds value to our offense because it now alleviates um, the, 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 our zone triple in those aiming points with uh, a further distant aiming point and the ability to really stretch the field. Like we're really stretching the field from the left, you know, from the, the boundary sideline all the way to the field sideline because he bursts off this mesh and uh, pitches it. I mean, that's another big play. So here, now we're going to do it where he's bringing the counter motion to it. So the previous play, this guy is lined up in the backfield, all right? Now in the in one before, you could see before where we ran it this way, right? Where he was blocking the dude in the, uh, in the boundary. Over the course of the game, you know, we set up the one where he's in the backfield in the sniffer alignment and we're running triple option to the field. Then we have him lined here we're running it this way on a double option and now we've got it where he's doing a counter motion to uh to be and gt triple to the field so he's coming here you know think about how many how much talking the defense has to do the ball is handed off because look at the read key read key is coming into the backfield vertical that dude the inverted defender to the alley there, the strong safety is screaming into the box to take away the triple option. And then this is just really nicely done with our offensive line. You can see the defensive end gets vertical into the backfield. Our guard with an easy kick out, our tackle pulls through, 
and it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup for a running back under the safety. Now, I'm showing you guys this because, all right, this is as good as you can fit this play. All right, they, like, Val Dosta does a tremendous job of taking this guy to swipe across the center's face to be in this spot and the whip to be down there, okay? So this is a tremendous job on their part, fitting this right and stuffing it. Now, when we're properly executing this, okay, we're still getting two yards on a perfectly fit play. Like they're in the right spot, right place, right time. Well, now we just set it up for third and short. And again, the movement that's coming here, look at the right side of the offensive line. They are building the wall. Everybody's over the, um, across the hash. The one thing though, okay, and this is how teams are really good at defending this, is if you look at that D tackle, as soon as he sees the center come towards him, on the pin, he's swiping and he's going across for the tackle. If our right tackle sees this guy and blocks him, we're getting another two yards, <laughs> you know? But I just wanna make sure that you guys understand they're not all home run threats to your counter spot. And sometimes, you, you know, right there, we might've been better suited just to run zone, but to threaten them with that constantly is huge. So now, um, we're in uh, an 11 personnel look with 10 personnel players, all right, with the sniffer. And look at our quarterback, mesh it, step out here, threaten, and even throws a little pump, all right? Our running or our slot is a little bit tight, but gets the proper spacing right here. And now watch our quarterback go. And even though this guy's really talented, um, an untalented quarterback that is a good decision maker, which I think everybody would agree is an innate trait, will still make that same decision. And with the space that we've got, might be getting tackled right now, you know, probably right about here, 10, 15 yard gain. But if you can develop 10, 15 yard gains, and then you, you know, you're, I mean, that's pretty darn good, you know, and then you're allowing, your guys to, you know, go be playmakers. That's awesome. So look at this box for a second here. We got a four down front. We got two linebackers. And now we got two safeties that are also in there. So we've got eight dudes that are tied into the box right now. Okay. So if this thing gets um, handed off, it's probably, you know, again, a two-yard play. But look at how well the offensive line blocks us. I'm going to start off with the right tackle. Right tackle, dropping that foot and driving number 12 across the hash. It's very important to know that this is a gap scheme play, so we're blocking the near number. Now watch the right guard. So he takes those steps, okay? He's got number 10 that's sprinting through there. If 10 gets through this thing, he's probably blowing up the mesh. But look at our right guard. Recognize it, throw him a shoulder, and throw them out of the bar. Our center on the pin immediately, number eight, swipes across for an ISO two. He's running all the way around there. Okay. He takes himself completely out of the play. The other thing I would say is if we're running zone to this side, we're probably better suited because of how that guy's trying to play us. He's swiping to go be a part where the pullers are. He's just reading the pullers. The guard gets a trap. The, uh, the tackle pulls through there. And number eight is there to make a play along with number 21, and the, their safety. And that's what we're talking about when we say speed and space is uh, making sure that we are condensing spots on the field for you know, space to be available for guys that are good with the ball.